Hey guys, it's Tom here. Um, I'm, I'm trying really hard to try and make this video without going too full blown into my FE and, and kind of, I'm trying. So sometimes before I make a video, I would literally just talk to myself for a bit to, to just try and, I guess, allow the topics and the subjects I want to talk about to kind of bubble up in my mind and, and kind of be there so I can pull them in. And, and and explain them and then sometimes I find as soon as I press the button to record it's like it's a weird feeling comes over me and it's kind of like you know, oh video oh hi, hi guys how are you doing and all this kind of stuff um, so I'm going to try and not do that which might make this video really boring it might make it come across as being very dull and maybe not as personable as maybe some of my other ones have been um, what was I going to talk about? See, this is the problem. Already I'm starting to, it's like my mind goes blank when the, I turn the camera on. Yet beforehand I could talk for hours and hours and hours. Performance anxiety, maybe. Um, oh, that was it. Well, I, I'll probably go and talk about a few things, but the first thing that comes to mind, I had a recent experience uh, last weekend Maybe I'll go into more details about it in another video because it that's it requires a whole other video. Um, but it was a, it was kind of a a weekend way a workshop, forty eight hour workshop, and it involved quite a lot of people. And I just noticed a few things over the weekend, um, which I thought might be INFJ applicable, or maybe other people, other INFJs might be able to relate. Um, also, I spent eight hours in a car journey, uh, sat across from an INFP, who, well, who I'm 99% sure was an INFP. And actually, when I saw that he had a cuddly toy in, in his luggage and he was nearly 37 years old, I was just like, I'm pretty much 100% sure you're an INFP now. Again, that's, try not to stereotype here, but it was just like the icing on top of the cake after we'd had this huge, you know, I'd been conversing with him for eight hours and I was just like, this guy, I'm pretty sure is damn, <laughs> you know, and it was so funny, especially after making these videos about INFJ, INFP, it's like the universe almost organized for me to have a car share with him. <laughs> um, but anyway, back to the first thing I wanted to talk about. During this weekend, with quite a lot of people around, I noticed um, a recurring little thing, little trait, um, experience that kept popping up. And I've called it, I've termed it, the INFJ invisibility cloak. Because there were several times during this weekend where, um, for the nature of the workshop, we needed to pair up with people. And I always try and pop myself out there quite a bit, N not massively, depends how I feel, but you know, I, I feel like I intentionally try and look around and make eye contact with people and, and try and offer my input to things when I'm asked or when there's a chance to volunteer. Not all the time, sometimes I don't feel like just doing it, I prefer to maybe take a little s sip, s uh, take a seat back and just observe things and kind of get a gauge of, of the atmosphere and what's going on. But there were several times when we were asked to couple up, to pair up with people, and it seemed to happen maybe two or three times that when everyone had finished mingling around and finding someone, I'd be the one left. <laughs> this is going to sound like a sob story here, like, no, 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 no. get the violin, that wasn't a violin, <laughs> whatever that was. but. I'll be the one left without a partner, or I'll be the one, you know, I'd have to team up with a member of the, of the staff who were there, um, or I'd be the last one to find someone. And this wasn't for a lack of trying. It was just like, I don't know. It was, you know, it wasn't like I was holding myself back, or I was shy, or I was on the sidelines, or I wasn't being quick enough. And I'll be looking around, but it just seemed to feel like almost a feeling of invisibility, like other people couldn't see me, or they just didn't notice me, um, like I was transparent. And this reminded me 
and you know, it took me back to many, many memories. Going back to school, going back to high school, going back to being, going to parties, all sorts of things. Um, you know, I guess other people might say it's kind of that wallflower feeling of just being on the sidelines. But what I'm trying to say is it's, it's not intentional. It's almost like other people can't see you. And it's a really weird, slightly uncanny feeling. And another guy that I'd actually, um, or another person that I'd made friends with uh, before the weekend started, um, throughout the course of the weekend, I saw this person many times, you know, I glanced at them, I made eye contact with them, I was, I was pretty much aware of, of where they were during the weekend, you know, maybe I'd give them a nod and stuff. Um, and then at the, at the end of the weekend, when we were talking about it in, in a group, um, this person said, oh, Tom, how did it go for you? I don't think I saw you at all over the course of the weekend. And I was like, what? I was pretty sure I saw you, and I'm pretty sure our eyes actually locked together, and, you know, we made eye contact quite a few times. Now, I didn't say that to, to the person, but that's what I was thinking inside, and I was just like, this is just so weird. You know, this, this is kind of a recurring theme. And like I say, it took me back to, to times in the past where this has happened before. And yeah, it's this feeling of being invisible. Um, and almost not because you're trying to be or tr trying to hide away. And something I, I've also remembered is, you know, even though I don't view myself as being, I can be, I can be reclusive and I can go away and I can be the quiet person. When I'm in group situations, I'm always trying, at least, to kind of integrate or or share an opinion or just, you know, not be odd or create any kind of, um, you know, maintaining harmony, as IFJs um, always get talked about doing. Yeah, I know that sometimes even the actual really quiet people you know, the people who actually feel like socially awkward and, and they may be like sit in the corner, they almost are known more than me because people would say, oh, someone better go check on so-and-so or where did so-and-so go? I haven't seen them all evening. Someone better go see if they're okay. And it was, you know, they're still on that person's mind where there'd be this feeling of, of being ever present, yet at the same time, maybe just not feeling that other people really, I don't know, maybe I'm just really boring, I don't know. <laughs> but when I can get one-on-one -on -one with somebody at a social event, and I can just kind of pull them to the side and start talking to them, then this whole dynamic changes. Then I can really make a connection with them if we can get talking on, you know, interesting enough subjects and if they're willing to open up enough. And people generally do, as I've said before, if given time will open up in my presence because I, I'm a good listener and, and I seem to ask questions that are very good at getting people to share parts of themselves. And if I can do that, then people will remember me and they'll remember my name, um, which again, something that has happened a lot in my life is people forgetting my name. I had a teacher in the second year of secondary school who repeatedly would call me Dave, like Dave. I've never met another person my age called Dave, just Dave. And so I was like 13 years old um, and I was like, no miss, my name's Tom. She's like, okay, next, next lesson. Dave, have you done your homework? My name's Tom. Okay, Dave. <laughs> it's just like, it's like only fools and horses if um, any, any of you guys from the UK know. Um, with Rodney always being called Dave. Um, and yeah, no, things that happen a lot. People giving me the wrong name, forgetting my name, and my name's not exactly hard to forget, you know, it's Tom. Um, but yeah, it's, it has been there. That's quite a consistent theme. So um, I thought it would be interesting just to, to point out. But yeah, when it comes to actually getting to being one on one with a person, um, then it changes. Then I make really strong connections, like very strong connections, especially if I find someone who's kind of a bit similar in terms of likes and, and worldview. It can make very strong connections and, and 
they'll remember me and I'll remember them and be like, Whoa. always nice to catch up. And and to be fair, that's what I prefer. That's that's honestly what I prefer. Even though there's a part of me that that always feels like, oh, it'd be really nice to be one of those people who kind of command a group of people or be take centre stage occasionally or or be that kind of social butterfly. In reality, when I most enjoy conversing with people or connecting with people, it's like one or two people max um, in a in a setting where we get onto like a meaty subject to talk about something really interesting, um, which to me is the big questions of life. What's going on? What's reality? Why are we here? Spirituality? Uh, what's going on in the world? What's happening? Uh, how is the future going to... Uh, you know, all, I mean, I had an amazing conversation driving back in the car with, with these two guys about everything from conspiracy theories to to the, the world waking up to things and just stuff that I just like phew, love talking about. And um, yeah, that's when I can really feel like I can share with those parts of myself that uh, can be received and acknowledged by others because that's kind of where I spend most of my time in my head thinking about, and that's where I build up my my knowledge and stuff and that's where I feel like I can have a, a say about things it's just taking me a long time and it still is a process now to kind of build up the confidence to actually share those things with other people because so often with my FE and kind of gauging other people and feeling their energy and, and, and being able to, to decipher how to relate to them it means I'm always holding back a huge part of myself whilst I do that so I can be that person who can come across however I want or however I feel that person would, you know, respond well to. Yet, when it comes to making lasting connections, and I, th I think this goes for anybody, regardless of type, it's about actually being much more open with someone so you can make that deeper connection so they can see who you really are and you can see who they really are. Although... There's a lot of times when I'm not even sure what I am and if I even have a self. But that's, again, that's another topic and that's something that is, I guess, a byproduct of being an INFJ. You know, the INFJ is the type that almost doesn't have a type because they can. their type is all about being able to come across as multifaceted um, and also be able to respond to people in very different ways and be able to see... You know, it's like being a Rubik's Cube. You can see the side of everything, every single side, and you can twist it that way and twist it that way to make a different combination or whatever. But sometimes it's just like, what the fuck is inside the Rubik's Cube if I just tore it apart? What would I find? And that's something that, for me, is kind of what I feel like is the biggest question of life and is what I'm always more concerned about, especially when it comes to other people. It's like... If I, you know, I want to suss out exactly who you are and see inside your soul and, and see see what's there. Um, anyway, I better shut up because this video is going to go on for too long and it's just a fucking pain in the ass to upload on an internet connection that is like 1.2 megabits. Yeah, living in 2008 here. <laughs> for even before that. Um, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm going to... I really want to start talking about, I say this every time, but maybe some of the subjects that are not so MBTI focused because, like I say, I think that will give you maybe a clearer reflection and a deeper insight into who I actually am. All right.